Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Fishing with Big D. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. I just went fishing early this morning, but didn't have any luck. Just trying some top water down at the river. Thought I might catch a small ear too. I think this heat that set in has just really got these fish very inactive right now. But come home and I got all my chores done, yards mowed, weed eaten. Honey to do list is gone, so now I'm going to work on some more of my Bass Raider 10E projects I got going on. If you're not familiar with that, I bought a Bass Raider 10E off the yard sale page. Ended up getting a very good deal on that. Ended up catching it for about 300 bucks. Still, definitely in my book. It's a nice boat, and I've been slowly doing modifications, trying to rig it up the way I like it. I got two different ways I'm wanting to rig it. I want to make a pop in and out casting deck so I could do some bass fishing. But I also have a rod mounting system I've got that I'm wanting to hook it up and make it into like a catfish raider is what I'm wanting to call it. Because I like to do a lot of catfishing as well. And it's about that time of year we're starting to cool off and we'll start going into the cooler months. And I think the fishing will do very well then. But until then my current situation is i've been having a lot of trouble right there's the boat i've been having a lot of trouble hauling this thing it sucks not having a trailer for it and what you got to know is it's 10 feet long it's probably 130 pounds somewhere in that range and then you add all my gear to it battery trolley motor currently i'm hand loading that into a truck grabbing all of our gear because there's nowhere to really store it and ride along so it's it's a lot of work it can take a good 30 to 40 minutes to get set up from in and out of the water. So one of my next purposes and goals and next project was to get a trailer. And I didn't want to spend a lot of money, nothing fancy. And I wanted to rig it up and modify it so it'll fit my Bass Raider. So I had a budget of about $500 tops. Been searching the yard sale pages. No luck, really. I ended up finding... Some other people online who had done the, I think it's called Harbor Freight Folding Trailer. i uh, seen some awesome projects. It turned out really good. So I went out to try that. Could not find those trailers in the stores to save my life. Ran sales after sales after sales, but I'd call around and none of them ever had them. They have a major issue with stocking those. So another person recommended a different one. I ended up finding it. It was that Northern Tool. I ended up getting it for... 350 bucks and I bought some accessories to go on it. Let me show you what we're going to be working with All right, so this is the I think they call it the Ironton or iron ton It is a 4x8 folding trailer kit and this is what it makes guys. It's pretty plain and simple It's more than enough Payload capacity 1170 pounds. I'm way below that category So I think this is going to do very well we're going to put something in place to where it doesn't fold. Probably run some bolts in there and make it permanent. And then we'll start doing our modifications. I also ended up catching this trailer jack. Pretty cheap. I think I gave 30 bucks for it. So overall in the project right now, I believe I'm getting close to 380 bucks. Shooting for that $500 mark. Let's get this thing together and I'll show you what other modifications I have in store. All right, guys, so we got box number one opened up. Looks like we've got the wheel guards, the leaf springs, and a ton of hardware. This looks like it's going to get very complicated coming up. Still got another box I'm getting ready to open up, and we'll set that out and take a look. All right, guys, so I'm three quarters of the way finished with this trailer. I want to go over some quick details with you and I'll try to make this fast but you will appreciate this information all right so here we go we've got our finished product almost finished I'd say three quarters of the way I still have to go back in and tighten up all these bolts I'm gonna put some Loctite on them just so they don't wiggle loose over time if you are a person who does not like to put together items if you do not like pre-assembled, I do not recommend you going with this trailer. This trailer was quite extensive in building. 
And what I mean by that is it said three hours to build. I'm working on 10 hours now. Still not finished. Still got to do my electrical. Still got to go back and tighten up some bolts. But I chose this because it was a cheaper route. I ended up paying about 350 bucks for this. I'll probably put another $100 into it to get it where I need it. And I have about 450 bucks into this trailer. If I was to buy a prefab trailer ready to go off the lot, I'm looking at $700 to $1,000. Yes, I searched Facebook for used. Could not find nothing that would suit my needs. This route, I get brand new, and I can modify it the way I want. And I'm staying pretty cheap with it, guys. So, like I said, if that's the route you want to go like me, I suggest you go this route. If you do not like to do the build yourself, I do not recommend this. You're going to be very frustrated, and it is time-consuming. I have spent a lot of time on this and a lot of aggravation. So let me point out some quick issues to help other people out who might come across this video thinking that we're going to show them some instructions. If I could have done this step by step, I wish I would have recorded it because it could have helped a lot of people. Because when I, myself, I went and tried to YouTube this to get some information, there's not a lot of stuff out there. Most of the stuff's already pre-finished in the videos. Alright, so one of the biggest things that I run into was these prefab drills. They are cut and drilled and they have to be specifically in the correct place if not when you go to tie into them later on like such as this triangle pattern in this tongue you're going to run into a lot of issues i found myself going two and three steps in a row only to get to step four and have to backtrack three or four steps to correct several different items all because of the orientation of a bar Another thing is, is they obsoleted a few of the bolts and nuts in here and they switched it to different sizes and styles but did not put that information in the book. They had me thinking I was crazy, that I'd lost parts, or that I was missing parts. Later on, just to find out, no, they just switched it to something different. I did have to go buy some extra hardware for the tires because they were missing the cotter pins on the inside there with the bearing and the hub. Those show in the book, and they are definitely a must because they would slide right off of the axle. Nothing to hold them in place. Those were not in the package. I had to go find those. So, some definitely, definitely got some issues. It wasn't perfect by no means, and it is very frustrating and aggravating, but here we are. All I got left is to tighten these bolts up, like I said, and then we're going to go further into the customization part, guys. I'll finish this up, and then once I've decided how I'm going to go about the placement of my boat on this, and I will make a decision on that, and then we'll come back, and I'll show you with what I went with. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so let's move on to the next phase in converting this trailer into a boat hauler. I've went and got me some pressure-treated plyboard. This is three-quarter, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this stuff's quite expensive right now with everything going on. It's went up from about $40 a board to $60 a board. A little bit crazy, but uh, first step we're going to have to do when I lay this out, it's pretty much cut perfect in length and what you need. I ain't going to have to make any cuts as far as width or the uh, height on the board. It all lines up real nice and even with my trailer on both sides. You are going to run into an issue where the folding hardware touches. So I've made me a couple of marks. I'm going to take a jigsaw or a saw and trim that out. I'm just going to notch it. A lot of people like to run this long ways right here. They just go ahead and cut the board in half and do two separate pieces. But I believe I'm going to leave mine whole to help with the structural integrity. And I'm not going to trim it down the center. So I'll be right back and we're going to go ahead and cut these two notches out and then we're going to glue the carpet to the board. My notches in both sides so that my hardware is not going to rub and when I glue the carpet on it's just going to, I'll just put a little slit right there and fold it inward. Nothing super fancy but next up all these little holes you see here in the frame 
I'm going to go through and I'm going to make that up with the board and I'm going to take I'm going to take my drill and I'm going to pre-drill holes in the board because I have some carriage bolts here that I'm going to run through there. This is what's going to hold it down to the platform. Or, excuse me, this is what I'll use to bolt the platform to the trailer. Alright guys, hopefully you guys can see good. The sun's coming out and getting high on me. It's getting a little hot too. Um, next up, I'm going to be pre-drilling my board so that I can run these carriage bolts through here. That's what's going to hold it to the frame. Um, I'll be using a... I think it's a quarter inch drill bit I've got a just a standard drill and I got some clamps these are gonna come in handy later in case you guys want to know what all I'm using and then because the bolt steps down a little bit there and size steps up a little bit I might actually take this paddle bit paddle bit I got here so I can kind of countersink my head into this a little bit not for sure yet but we're gonna go ahead and drill the first few holes all I'm gonna do is mark them up real good right here and then I'll flip this board over and drill a couple of holes. I'll just take a marker from the inside of the trailer and fill it. You're going to want to make sure that you've got your board as nice and straight as possible against this trailer when you get ready to do this step so that everything turns out good and it fits snug. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark my holes and then I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to drill them out. I'll do it one side at a time just so I can kind of get it right. And we'll go from there. All right, guys. So I've got my holes pre-drilled. I set a few bags on that corner back there, starting to bow from the sun. Just wanted to weigh it down and kind of get it back to a malleable point where I could work with it. But all my holes are ready. Next is carpet. I've got this outdoor carpet. I bought this at my local Ollie store. Thirteen bucks. It's six by eight. This trailer's four by eight, so it'll up and under wrap around the back end of this about foot and a half all i'm going to do is use it and then i've got some of this all weather carpet adhesive uh, this stuff's about 15 20 dollars a can so i'm going to take this i got my clamps over there and i got a little paintbrush drying out right there i had to clean it up a little bit so i'm going to paint this glue on glue this carpet to the top and i'm not going to do the bottom side yet or the side pieces yet I'm just going to let the top dry out real good. I'm going to put my clamps on there to hold it in place nice and tight. And then after I got that good and on tight, I'm going to flip it over, pull it as tight as I can, and do the side pieces in the back. And then I'll go over it with a staple gun and put some staples in it to hold it, let that dry. Then we'll flip it back over, put our bolts in, and she should be ready to go with this process and this step. All right, guys. I've got the bolts back out and I picked my board up off the frame and turned it sideways so I can apply the glue and carpet. Hopefully this wind ain't too bothersome for you. It's starting to pick up on me, but all I did is I laid my carpet out. I've got it even on both sides and I've come around here to the front side, or excuse me, this will be the rear side of my trailer. And those clamps I was telling you about, I went and I clamped it to the end. All I'm going to do is uh, start from this end and start gluing it. I'll just flip back and forth from both sides. Hopefully this stuff doesn't dry too fast. Just going to paste a good liberal amount on both, all the way up and down, left and right. And I'll start rolling that carpet out and stretching it as tight as I can. And pulling it all the way down here to the edge. Alright, so we got our carpet down. It's glued. I got these little clamps on holding the pressure and keeping the wrinkles out we're going to let this dry for about 30 minutes out here in this hot sun shouldn't take long and then we're going to flip it over glue the sides and then glue down the overhang the overlap and then we'll take some staples pull it tight just to make sure we keep all those wrinkles out keep it nice and straight and we'll staple it down all right guys so that's the final step we've got the boards in place Everything's glued down, and we now have the bolts bolted to the frame. Overall, it looks good. I'm going to go back in and tighten it up over time. Just as the sun continues to hit it, it'll start pulling the bow out. 
and the screws will come loose a little bit, but we'll tighten them up and keep some lock tight on it. Our next step in process is going to be to make our side boards, our guide rails, that'll hold the boat in place. And I won't have to worry about it rocking back and forth and falling off. Alright guys, we're going to the next step of the process. Should be the final, hopefully. <laughs> I've been saying that for like two days now. I'm going to make side runners and a back end running board here. Uh, this is just to hold the boat in place so it don't shake and vibrate left and right when you're pulling it down the road. Uh, as you can see, the trailer has brackets for 2 by 4 posts. They don't fit just right. I'm going to have to sand them down. But the material list that I got on here for you, i uh, going to need some wood screws for the 2 by 4s of course. Um, I think I got two 12-foot long ones and four 10-footers. I think that should be enough. If I did my calculations right, I'm going to run two boards on the sides and then two boards on the back so we can hold them in place. I'm also going to carpet them so that they don't rub spots into my boat. Once again, the boat's just made of plastic. First up, I've went and I've taken one of the 10-footers and I've cut it off into 24-inch sections. That's two-footers. So I got five out of one. And then I'm going to cut one of the 12s down, if I'm not mistaken. That'll give me the additional two-footer that I need for all six bar holders here on the side. Uh, there's the rest of my materials. But I also got some more of this carpet, similar color. I had to go for a different style, kind of, because my local store had run out of the original version that I had. Uh, I've got some of the leftover glue, and I've got some black spray paint. I'll be spray painting these posts black so they kind of match the trailer. Give it some additional waterproofing, I guess. But, all right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut these up, and we'll piece them together. I'll show you a few more steps in between, and then hopefully we'll have a finished product. All right, I got all my side rails cut good and even, and I got them dry fitted. I'm going to go through, and I'm going to mark all the bolt holes so I can pre-drill these, and then I'm going to spray paint these black. That's the next process. After I pre-drilled my holes, I went over these with sandpaper, real rough grid, and just really got rid of the splinters and rough edges. This will help in the protection of my boat and my carpet. I just don't want those splinters hanging out and catching stuff, making tears and making grooves in the side of my boat. So, future wear and tear protection. Uh, this took a few minutes. I definitely recommend you do it. Next up, I've taken the can of spray paint uh, this is for wood i just got what the guy recommended behind the counter i've got one tall can it looks like and it's pretty much covered all these boards i've got a quarter of a can left it feels like and i'm just gonna go through and give it a second coat but that'll just give it some additional waterproofing uh, these are treated right now treated lumber is hard to get so it's a little bit expensive i could have come by cheaper on this project had not all this been going on but it is what it is. We want to get it done and get on with our lives. So there you have it, guys. Next, after these are dry, we'll put another coat on. Then we'll re-dry fit these in. We're going to go get some carriage bolts. That's probably what I'll use for the hardware. And next up, we will cut our last few boards to make our runners that we will be carpeting. And we'll stick those on. Stay tuned. All right, guys, I've got my boat up and on here, and I'm kind of dry fitting. You definitely want to do this so you know where to run your next two runner boards. I decided to run two runner boards just to help out with the stability and stuff. Um, might also create a kayak rack to go on the top, but that's something different, different video. But I'll be running a top and lower running board, and those will be my carpeted ones. We'll do that next. Stay tuned. Ready to carpet my runner boards. And as you can see, I've just got a nice clean surface on that tarp to work with so I don't get the carpet real dirty. Uh, I'm just going to glue it, fold over one side about halfway of the board, put a good row of staples in it, lay my next layer of glue and just flip it over and try to pull it as tight as possible. I'll be using these little clamps to help hold it down. Once again, that's just the leftover indoor-outdoor carpet glue. Uh, my top two runners, I think, are going to run 
10 feet and then my bottom two I'm gonna cut them off at eight feet and I think that's how I'm gonna run it then I'll have my two back runners they'll be the same size about four feet long and I will interconnect them so it's nice strong and sturdy I've got some outdoor screws then all we got left is to put the hardware in all right guys let's get to gluing there you have it I've got my side runners on I'm gonna drill through them holes and run some more carriage bolts but that's what she looks like we carpeted them so that they won't rub the sides of my boat all i got left is to fix up these end pieces here i got some excess i need to trim off and glue and staple and i believe she'll be ready all i'll have left is to pick me out a hand hoist crank And that should be it, guys, uh, once I finish that up. I uh, thought about putting some flagpoles here. I just got to see if I could see the trailer better behind the truck with or without them. I hadn't decided yet, but I'm going to load this boat up on air and make sure everything fits good and snug. Shouldn't have to use, but maybe one tie down when I'm hauling this. I might do two. And I'll pick out my winch and install it as well. Alright guys, I want to show you the final product. This is what I've come up with. Got my side rails installed, got our carpeted bottom, got my Bass Raider 10E up and loaded. Fits nice in between these two rails here. Kind of keeps everything nice and in place. I ended up shortening these to 8 feet instead of 10, just so you know. And I'm going to have about two feet of overhang, which works out good when you're backing down into the water at the boat ramp. Overall, I think it turned out good. I ended up having probably about $560 altogether. If you include the hardware and the glue and stuff, you might get lucky and have some of that already laying around the house. But overall, $560. Bucks. I don't have to carry it no more. It's constantly stored safe, off the ground, tarped, and it's easy to maneuver and get to and from the lake to fish. And in my book, that saved me a lot of time and effort. 